You see it from down below, it's, it's almost that long instead of just being this long, where they only see this little part is all they see on top of the water. You'll be surprised at what smallmouth will attack. I had a smallmouth early this year. It was actually one of the good fish I caught down on Table Rock. Uh, it was a Joe Bass event. Anybody heard of Joe Bass? Joe Bass Team Trail. Uh, it's part of the Bassmaster Team Trail. Well, that thing is kicking off huge in this state. Uh, matter of fact, the last two anglers to go to the Bassmaster Classic from Joe Bass, or from the Bassmaster Team Trail, were both anglers from right here in Missouri. Um, so with that particular bait, the other top water I like to use is a spook. This right here to me is one of my all-time favorites. Matter of fact, I would rather fish this over a buzz bait all day long. The only thing with this type of top water bait is this bait you have to fish a little bit slower. It's not just a throw and you know retrieve it back to the boat. Now you can vary your retrieves with the buzz bait. I got that. This one you can also vary some things you do with it. So I fish jerk baits on a lake when the water gets cold, when it gets slow, when the bite slows down, you know, because the, uh, the fish will slow down, they'll get a little more lethargic depending on the type of year or the time of year and uh, the seasons, right? They'll slow down. The metabolism slows down so they don't eat as much. We're, re we're about ready to go into a feeding frenzy on the lake because the bass are going to start feeding on shad prior to the fall when the lake's getting really cold and that thermocline turning over. Okay? So with that, I'm going to throw a jerk bait, and I'll guarantee you I'm going to throw one of these in the morning. If you fish uh, any part of Table Rock or any type of the rivers that go into the lakes, this around those cedars, you know what I'm talking about? You can see them on Table Rock when you drive over the bridge. You see those cedars that are sticking up out of the lake? I find the meatiest portion of that cedar. I'll, I'll use my graphs, and I'll look and see, and I'll look around, I'll find out where they're at. And I'll take this bait and I'll just slowly work it around those trees. Yeah. I had a four pound smallmouth come out of the water and knock this 10 feet in the air and scare the living crap out of me one day. He almost came in the boat because it was almost to the boat. So I started to say that telephone call, threw it out there, and the cedar was between me and there. So I'm just. I'm looking around, I'm looking for other things to, 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 to fish, I'm looking around, I'm, I'm walking the dog, I'm slowing down, I'm, I'm popping it, I'm doing different things, right? Then all of a sudden, my line loaded up and it went limp and I looked up and I could hear the splash and I looked over and that smallmouth was out of the water, bending and turning, it was a beautiful thing. If that would have been on TV, that would have been the most beautiful picture or video you ever saw, okay? But that fish came out of the water and bent and I wish it had been on camera. And that bait, this one, this is the one I was thrilled. I blame it on me, for it. Okay? So, this bait was like 10 feet out of the water. I mean, he hammered it that hard. How he didn't get these two hooks in his mouth, I have no idea. But it was a beautiful sight. That small mouth just it broke my heart. But it was beautiful to see. Because I'm going to free the fighter anyway. I'm going to put it back after the weigh Because that was an actual tournament, so I needed it for a weigh But uh, some other baits that I like to use. These are the ending of the baits that I like to use on the river. Everything I've got on that table is what I would pack in a box if I was going to go out for the day on the river. Uh, small square bill crankbaits are absolutely phenomenal. Uh, the other bait that we used that day, I was telling you, I was with my buddy Jim up on the Gasconade. When we were throwing those tubes, we were also throwing these for this right here. This one happens to be a Strike King uh, KVD 1.5 square bill crankbait. And what I've done is I've changed the back hook to a triple grip, okay? I've changed that back up to a triple grip. I don't really care much about the front, but the back ones are what I like to change the most. Number one, it saves me money on those crankbaits uh, by changing just one hook. Some of them I'll change two. Now this particular one right here, this is one by Jeff Tatum's 19 Delta Baits right back there. Uh, I got this bait when it was in prototype uh, a while back when he was starting to make that color and make these type of baits. Um, and when he first started, he wasn't using the uh, the triple grit hooks, if you will. He was using the round bend, regular treble hook. And he switched that over uh, to the triple grit. I honestly think that these hooks with that little extra bend in there keep the fish on long enough for you to get it out of the water. 
whether you have a net or not. Now, luckily for most of us, we're allowed to have a net in whatever tournament we fish. Um, you guys are in the kayak tournament, right? You can have a net? Okay. Well, now, my boat is a little bit further off the water, so i I got to kind of lay down and kind of got to get up underneath there. And I like grabbing fish, but at the same time, if I miss grabbing that fish or that fish kind of jumps before it gets in the net, you, they'll throw the hooks. The reason why I talk about that is these triple grips will actually help keep that fish on a little bit longer. And number one, if you notice, these hooks kind of bend in a little bit towards the shank of the hook. It's not out a little bit further, so it gives me that one little quarter inch more space that I can throw this into some cover. I will throw this around lay downs, logs, trees, bushy trees, rocks all day long and feel confident that I'm going to pop it out of there. Now, have I lost one? You betcha, I've lost more than one one with my tight square little crank paper. But this one right here, uh, as you can see, that bill's pretty scraped up, okay? Paint's kind of getting rubbed off there. And there's his initials right there, Jeff Tatum. That's the dumb face. I use that on a regular basis. These baits right here are phenomenal for smallmouth. And you've got some right back there. Those lovely wife and daughter back there, they will swear you away uh, with different types of baits in the OSA Pro Color. All right, so that's a must-have. Probably one of my all-time favorites for the big water and in the skinny water on the river. The big water, uh, especially around the banks or points early in the morning when the, when the shad start popping, the fish start feeding off the shad, is a simple number one. This is a number, this is another 1.5 square bill. This bait right here with the shad color and the black on it. I don't care if it's in dark water or it's in uh, uh, water that's really clear. This bait will work well as, as well. I really like this type of square bill crank bait. The reason why I like these square bills, you notice I got three of them, is because when you fish the skinnier water, you don't want a bait that runs down to 12, 10, 12 feet. Because then you are going to get caught up. If I'm fishing the river, this little, this little bill on these square bills, these are perfect. These are three to five feet. So if I run into an eddy that's got, you know, 10 foot, I can crank down a little bit faster, or I can run my rod down in the water, and I can. I can make up for that one to five foot difference, right? Well, if I'm just kind of casually cruising it through the water, this is only going to go three foot deep. It's not that bad, so I can still cover good water. The biggest thing with a square bill is you want it to hit the bottom of the lake or the river. You want it to, you want it to drag and dra on the bottom of that cover. You know, I've had people say, "Well, I don't like ruining my bait because we're dragging the rocks." I'm like, "Don't buy that bait because that bait is designed to drag those rocks. That's what it's for." Now, are you going to break bills off? You betcha. If you're not breaking baits, <laughs> breaking off fish, you're not fishing hard enough. You're going to lose hooks. You're going to lose weights. You're going to lose baits. You're going to break a bait crank bait. I mean, I've lost twenty dollars crank baits before. Because I still work for a living. I haven't made any money in fishing. Trust me. If I made money in fishing, uh, I'd be in another part of the country probably in the country right now. Uh, but I do it for fun. Fish the local stuff with these guys around here. Uh, I, I love it. Uh, I love fishing in Missouri, Oklahoma, Arkansas, Texas, of course, uh, and other parts of the country. So if you have any questions uh, for the next little bit, feel free to come up and hit me up and uh, ask questions about a particular type of bait or technique. I'll be willing to share that with you. You know, I've got a lot of friends that won't, won't take other people fishing because they don't want to show them their spot. I have people I know that aren't really friends, I call them more colleagues, if you will, uh, in tournaments, that are afraid to have a co-angler because they don't want people to see their spot. And they won't talk to you about the bait they use. They won't show it to you. They won't show you the type of hook that they use. Me and my buddies always say, you can give somebody the bait all day long, but they still have to go catch the fish. They still have to go catch it. Okay, so I don't think it's an unfair thing to tell you that. If I won a tournament last week in a farm and on this yeah. tournament, I'll tell you. Yep, cut him on that one, man. Here you go. I have it. Good luck. Go catch him. I want people to catch the fish. Just not the tournament. Yet. If you fish the tournament, we'll have one talk about after How much are you? Anytime. I do a lot of seminars at Bass Pro Shop a couple times a month. Um, Season's kind of little to an end. We got a big tournament uh, on Table Rock. Uh, next month is the Joe Bass Invitational that gets us down to Florida. We get the place in that one. 
we go through the one floor, we go to a six-man uh, fish-off, and whoever wins that one goes to uh, the Bass Patch Classic this year. So I'm hoping that I can add the uh, classic thing up here on my jersey. Uh, I'm kind of hoping for that, but I also am humble enough to know that I'm just a little guy in a big state with a lot of good anglers that I've learned from. I've got to go beat. It's pretty tough to beat. I'm going to be honest with you. Okay, they taught me everything I know. Uh, any questions? You can hit me up afterwards. Go ahead. How do you sign the colors on the spooks? On the spooks? Darker the water, darker the spook. I mean, that's literally how simple I keep it. Uh, the buzz bait's the same thing. Hot water, the darker the water, the darker the sky, the darker the bait. If it's blue, bluebird, clear skies, I'll go a white. Uh, chartreuse or, or that type of uh, color. Same thing with the baits. Now, the crankbaits, the darker ones work better on the rivers and they work better in the muddier water. But that black and yellow right there, I mean, that is a flush color uh, any time of the year. It's funny because Ryan asked me a couple weeks ago, what do you want, what do you want to call these things? I'm like, wrong right. Bronze back, a beautiful smallmouth fish. I'm like, we go out there, we want to flush. We want to throw a bait and smoke. They feed the fighters, get them back in the water, right? Put them back in the water, let them live for other people to catch. Okay, that was it. That flush color right there, I call this the flush color. Because I can go out there and catch them on this bait right now. Now that I've said that, we can go down there right now and not catch nothing, but we'll blame it on the wind. I can't even blame it on the weather because actually, I, most of the better fish I've caught in tournaments I've won have been in pretty nasty weather. Pretty nasty weather. So I can't even say that. Any other questions? Yeah, I was still a cracker. Nope. Sure don't. If it's clear water and calm, i.e., no wind at all, I'll throw one. I'll throw a white one without a clacker and no trailer. Because I want to slow down that presentation. Because then it's just out of whack. The conditions kind of tell your bait. Kind of like when I was talking about the beginning in the, the seminar today. The conditions of the water are going to dictate what you throw and how you throw. It just it's just going to happen. If there's if you got bluebird skies and there's not an ounce of wind and you look out over that lake and it is solid glass and there is nothing moving. I mean all there is is horse fly. How many of y'all been on Lake by horse fly? <laughs> Man, especially you guys on the river. I don't know how you do it in a kayak. Getting that load of the water, getting all the flies in there. Boy, when that's all you see and you're fighting off horse flies, you got to slow down and go to a finesse technique. You got to go to a finesse technique. But if they're not biting on a finesse technique, then just go crazy. Look in your box and go, you know what? That's not supposed to catch fish this time of year in this type of water, but I'm going to throw it anyway. And you'd be surprised how sometimes just throwing something different than everybody else. You know, if you got 10 guys running down the same bank throwing the same bait, Find out what they're throwing and throw opposite. If they're throwing a little quarter ounce finesse, uh, shaky head, you know, six inch worm, straight tail or uh, finesse worm, then throw on a, a full size brush hog and start faking that thing with garlic and color and a big weight, and crash it up in the water. You'd be surprised. Sometimes that'll catch it, but, uh, a bass off guard and they'll eat it. So they'll eat it. Right. So, Bass when you have to retie, it's a little bit of a deterrent. I'm hesitant to do that. The, the switch I, I haven't felt good about it before. I didn't feel like that for some reason the bait presentation was right. Or hook up. Um, I don't use snatchwood. Okay, I do not. But I don't say that you shouldn't because I know a guy right now uh, his name is John he lives in South Carolina he used to work with us over at the fort this guy would excuse me only take a couple rods anytime he went fishing and he had snap swivels on the end of it so he could quickly change out his baits and you know what almost every time we went to the lake he embarrassed me I mean literally just caught him and I did or vice versa and I said you know what I'll never argue a snap swivel again it's funny you mentioned that because there are some guys, I actually know some pro anglers that they use certain types of uh, hookups like that so they can quickly get their baits on and off the line if they're trying to get a presentation. But you know, you got guys that swear by eight pound test catching six pound back. Now do they lose a lot doing that? You dug on right. They'll lose more than they catch, but they might win the Bassmaster Classic for an eight pound test catching the six pound back. 
but that might have been the one big one they caught on that line. Yeah, you know, to, uh, I want to say it's everything about confidence. You know, I was never comfortable throwing clear blue ultra, uh, what do they call that, blue ultra, what's that blue line? That's how much I don't even know about it because I, I, I quit using it years ago. That fluorescent blue. And you can see it in the water, so it works great. But guess what? If you can see it, the fish can see it too. So I went to clear. I use strictly clear line and I use heavy line. People say I'm crazy, but I haven't lost a fish in a tournament yet using heavy line. And I see guys break off on six and eight pound tests all the time. I'm like, dude, we're not trout fishing, man. You're looking for four to six pound largemouth and smallmouth. And those of you that have caught smallmouth and largemouth know that, uh, I'll tell you, they'll, they'll, they'll fight. They call them fighters for a reason, you know. I love throwing that heavy. I, I'm confident with it, and I've learned to be confident with it. Uh, do I throw braid? You betcha. I betcha I'll throw jigs on braid all day long. And I don't put a, I, I don't put a leader on there. I've seen guys go with 65 pound braid and they put an eight pound leader. I'm like, what are you doing? The only thing that's going to work is that that 24 inches, an eight pound test. So you just spent all this money on this heavy line. Yeah, but I don't have to change the line. Off. No, you are changing that 24-inch section of a leader. But hey, I, I don't knock any style of fishing because I get beat all the time on things that I wouldn't do, and, and people get beat by me doing things that they wouldn't do. You just got to change things up because usually you don't see the same guy as a champion every year, do you? Choosing somebody different. Everybody's beatable, but everybody has something that they use. I learn from people in the crowd all the time. I learn from people in the crowd all the time. So, share information. The bottom line is have fun. Go fishing. People are like, man, I want to go fishing. Then go fishing. You, can't, you don't know if you're going to catch them until you get out there. The fish aren't going to come to you on the couch. You know, get out there and take those kids fishing. You know, uh, go out there and learn something. Help the outdoors. What other questions you got? Anybody else got any questions? All right, good deal. Hey, thanks for listening. I really appreciate it. It's good to see you guys. Hopefully you have a great time here at Bronze Fest. Make sure you get around to see all the other vendors. Uh, take a look at the baits. As a matter of fact, Jeff Tatum's got some of them square bills that I got over there. He's got them right over there. Any good things. Appreciate it, y'all. Thank you. <laughs>